A game like Oros takes me back to my early freelancing days. When I was writing for Destructoid, I wasn't actually getting paid during my first year, so I took on side gigs at a site called New Game Network to actually make some money. While the site didn't pay well, it often had a ton of keys for minimalist puzzle games that featured either an incredibly unique aesthetic or some deceptively deep gameplay. This is where I first learned of games such as Sinker, Yonkai's Peak, and Ovivo. Simple games with intuitive mechanics and brisk runtimes that challenge your mind rather than your reflexes. Oros is the same as those games. I've written pretty much the same review multiple times in the past because there are only so many ways you can describe what a puzzle game such as Oros is. That doesn't mean there aren't interesting quirks here, but nothing is truly unique and the experience is over before you can even bat an eye at it. I'd still like to delve into this a little, so let's talk about how Oros attempts to stump you with its easy to learn, hard to master mechanics and calming atmosphere. To borrow the explanation of Oros from its official itch page, Oros is a calming puzzle game about forming beautiful curves in a serene space. Find your flow as you nudge, bend, and stretch curves into pleasing shapes. The goal is simple. Align the curve with the targets, then watch the orb gracefully glide through them. That really does sum up exactly what Oros is. Created by solo indie dev Michael Kamm as his first commercial game, Oros began life as part of the Ludum Dare 47 Indie Jam a few years back. Michael was reportedly enamored by the visual beauty of splines and wanted to explore their potential as mechanics in a game. As such, Oros has you pulling and twisting lines to create perpetual motion drawings that look beautiful when solved. To achieve this, the mechanics are incredibly simple. You just click on one of the anchors and pull out the line with your mouse. In an awesome touch, players on the Steam Deck can even use their touch screens to manipulate the lines. In the future, Oros will launch on mobile devices, which is exactly what I thought of when solving the first puzzle. Obviously, the game doesn't just stick with simply moving lines and simple configurations. As you get further into the game, new ideas for these lines will be gradually introduced, such as fully connected lines that need to be knotted, disconnected lines with teleporters, and even anchor points that are stuck to a limited range while one segment is allowed to flow freely. With over 120 puzzles included, Oros fully milks its central gimmick before the credits roll. What makes minimalist puzzle games so intriguing for me is how effective they are at communicating what needs to be done to the player. As with any tightly crafted puzzler, Oros can be played by people of all languages. There isn't a lick of text in the game, apart from the menus, which are actually available in 12 languages, so you'll need to experiment firsthand with how to learn what Oros wants. I suppose having numbers for how you need to solve puzzles might appear limiting, but then there does need to be some goal, or else this game would simply devolve into messing around. Progression through the game is very similar to Sinker 2, in that you don't need to complete every single puzzle to finish each area. While the first couple of puzzles are likely not going to stump anyone, later chapters will require a set number of puzzles to be solved before progressing to the next set. It gives you some options for when you get stumped, which is very much appreciated. And with that, I've basically described the entirety of what Oros is and what makes it unique. While I didn't 100% complete the game, as a few of the later puzzles stumped me a bit too much, it only took me a little over two hours to reach the credits. One thing that I do think hurts Oros a bit is that the included hint system is a bit too forgiving. Essentially, it shows you what the completed puzzle looks like, and has no limits on how many times you can view it. I suppose one needs to practice restraint when utilizing hints, and the game doesn't outright solve things for you, but it does sometimes rob you with figuring out how you need to configure these lines to achieve victory. Even so, I was always going to be an easy mark for Oros. I really do love games that put gameplay front and center over anything else. I understand that the audience for Kill All Games is probably not one to give Oros a second glance, but I started this channel to review games I wanted to review. Even if Oros doesn't have exciting guns or funky enemies, it's still entertaining and well-made. Potentially, one could claim that minimalist puzzle games like this are a dime a dozen in 2024, and they wouldn't be wrong. I've played so many titles that are practically identical to Oros in execution that one could find those and be good. For a quick game to pull out on your phone while waiting for a doctor's appointment, or to tease your mind a little, Oros is absolutely perfect though. Maybe Oros won't win awards for originality, but not everything fun needs to be wholly unique. Games, much like movies and music, are expression of people's collected influences over the years of their life. I wouldn't doubt that Michael Kamm is a big fan of Sinker, so it makes sense that his first retail title is comparable. While I would hope that his next game maybe blazes its own trail, 
Starting off with a high quality puzzle experience is always going to endear you to me. Oros is definitely that. 